Hey gang, LinkedIn is number one in B2B display advertising in the U.S. And using LinkedIn advertising gives you a great advantage. You can stand out against your competitors while nurturing customer relationships and growing your brand. LinkedIn's targeting tools allow you to reach your precise audience down to their job title, company name, location, and more. That means your ads are being seen by those who matter. Scale your marketing, grow your business with LinkedIn advertising. As a thank you to their customers for helping them grow three times faster than the competition and just for listening to Winfluence, LinkedIn is offering a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash Winfluence. That's right. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence just for you to claim that credit. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. A hundred bucks in free ads? I'm down. On this episode of Winfluence, I can now find influencers whose audiences get excited about the kind of content my brand wants to create with them versus just ones with a minimal level of engagement rates. Now you can start to see where affinity can be a super filter. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. The word affinity has a wide range of meanings. The core one is a relationship by marriage. That's according to Merriam-Webster. But it can also mean a similarity based on a relationship or casual connection, which is to say the spectrum of the relationship can be strong or not so strong. I have an affinity for bourbon, but I also have an affinity for Hanson's 1997 album, Middle of Nowhere. I can live without one of those, so the affinity is different. And that is the underlying factor a good influence marketing strategist needs to keep in mind about using affinity as a filter for influencer prioritization. If you're not familiar with affinity and how that applies to influencer marketing, get out your notebooks. Today on Winfluence, we'll take a look at affinity, what it means in the context of influence marketing, and how you can use it to produce a more successful influence marketing campaign. A lot of the inspiration and learning I've been doing and having about affinity that you'll hear in today's episode comes by way of my use of and relationship with Tagger. It is a complete influencer marketing software platform that allows you to find, engage, book, collaborate, pay, and measure influencers. Tagger is also the presenting sponsor of this podcast and the platform I use in my day-to-day work at Cornette to manage the influence marketing efforts of our clients. In fact, Tagger has some proprietary affinity algorithms that do a lot of the discovery and connections for you within the tool. I'm going to talk about how they all happen today so you can know what to look for without it. But why wouldn't you explore doing all this work with a platform that can help, like Tagger? I highly recommend you give Tagger a look-see. When I have a new project for influencers, I have my campaign up and running. I build my lists of potential collaborators. I spit out one-page profiles of each of my collaborators for my clients to review, and then I load in contracts, creative briefs, and more. I can do all that in just a few minutes, provided I have the briefs written, of course. Tagger's good, but it can't write them for me. When my creators post on their social networks, the data is pulled into Tagger automatically so I can kick out analytics reports for our campaigns to give our clients every day, if need be. All I ask of you is to do a demo of Tagger. See it for yourself. Go to jason.online slash Tagger and sign up for a free demo today. It might just be the influence marketing management solution you are looking for. It certainly does wonders for me, my team at Cornette, and our clients. That URL again is jason.online slash Tagger. Affinity. What it means for building better influence marketing programs and how you can leverage it. That's next on Winfluence. You know, we talk a lot about influencer marketing software on this show, and the worst thing about it for a lot of you is that influencer marketing software for small businesses is too expensive, right? Well, Reach Influencers solves that problem. Now your small business can find, engage, and manage micro and nano influencers, the ones you can afford to work with, and Reach Influencers costs as low as $100 per month. Are you kidding me? No, it's true. Go to CaptureTheInfluence.com slash podcast and see for yourself. Find, engage, manage, influence with software built and priced for your sized business. CaptureTheInfluence.com 
slash podcast. Hey gang, LinkedIn is number one in B2B display advertising in the U.S. and using LinkedIn advertising gives you a great advantage. You can stand out against your competitors while nurturing customer relationships and growing your brand. LinkedIn's targeting tools allow you to reach your precise audience down to their job title, company name, location, and more. That means your ads are being seen by those who matter. Scale your marketing, grow your business with LinkedIn advertising. As a thank you to their customers for helping them grow three times faster than the competition and just for listening Listening to Winfluence, LinkedIn is offering a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. That's right. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. Just for you to claim that credit. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. A hundred bucks in free ads? I'm down. So what is Influencer Affinity? Like the definition says, an influencer's affinity is the likeness or commonality he or she has with your brand or content. You can also look at affinity as a similarity between your audience and the influencer's audience. The more alike any of these are, the better your chances of the influencer or his or her content resonating with your audience or your brand or content with theirs. To explain it at a very high visual level, I like to use an Instagram mood board test to see if a given creator's content there aligns with that of the client or brand in question. Let's say I'm a men's accessory brand, so a watch, jewelry, eyewear, electronics, or even bourbon. My target audience is discerning men, aspirational to high net worth, but in their 20s and 30s. I'm looking for potential influencers on Instagram. And I find someone like Jackson Kresiak. I'll link to him and the others I reference in the show notes so you can see who I'm talking about. When I look at a snapshot of his Instagram posts, I get a sense of his content, a mood board, if you will. He's young, has some posts with friends, one with a dog, another with a cat. Then a couple without his shirt on, making a fish face, and then a sepia-toned, dreamy picture of him in a canopy bed, but in a jacket and shades. I keep looking and find Cesar Chakuma. Esquire, even. His mood board looks quite different, more elegant, more upscale, if you will. He dresses exceptionally well, is photographed in more premium settings at what appears to be a beach resort in front of a luxury automobile. So if I'm a luxury brand like the jewelry company Mansion, which of the two looks more like me? Now, I know a lot of this is hard to see in a podcast, but Mansion's content looks a lot more like Caesar Chakuma Esquire than Jackson Kresiak. This is a high-level directional indicator. It's not a deciding factor. But the point here is there's a higher degree of visual affinity between Mansion, the brand, and Chakuma, and thus a more likely connection to his audience than the other way. The same thinking can be applied to other factors about the creator and compared to your brand. We do it quite naturally with demographics. His or her audience needs to look like ours, or at least the ones we're striving to reach. But now affinity is taking on a more important role in how we decide whom to work with. But let's also talk about content affinity. This refers to the level of commonality or similarity one content stream has with another. My content stream is going to have a high level of affinity with Gordon Glenister's. He is also an influencer marketing podcaster and author who posts a lot about the industry and practice. My content stream is going to have some level of affinity, but not as much with Alicia White, who is Bourbon Sipper on Instagram, because I do post about bourbon there sometimes. My content stream doesn't have much level of affinity with people who post about beekeeping or marathon running or quilting. As I mentioned earlier, Tagger has a proprietary algorithm it has developed to determine and present affinity within its tool. Other platforms have similar features, but Tagger's has always seemed more precise and advanced to me. You can look at a brand's profile and see other brands or even individuals whose content and audience show high affinity. You can also look at an influencer's profile and find similar influencers, then brands whose content aligns as well. Typically, affinity algorithms are driven by an analysis of the keywords and hashtags used by a given influencer or brand. Match those occurrences with similar results in other accounts. The higher the percentage of commonality, the higher the affinity. But you can go deeper. You can look at the percentage of a given content topic, let's say bourbon, in someone's content. Then cross-check the engagement level just for that type of content. Now overlay that with similar information from other influencers or even brands. 
and you have a list of potential influence partners who not only post about bourbon, but drive similar, assumingly high, levels of engagement around the topic. To restate that a little more clearly, I can now find influencers whose audiences get excited about the kind of content my brand wants to create with them versus just ones with a minimal level of engagement rates. Now you can start to see where affinity can be a super filter. The problem with any data-only filter, though, is the lack of humanity in the decision. Choosing only creators whose affinity with your brand is above a certain level on some algorithms analysis only means you may have a better chance your partnership will resonate. According to Tagger, I rate high on the affinity score for USAA, the financial services company, for military personnel and their families. But I have very little in common with that brand other than my grandfather served in World War II, and I know someone who used to work there in marketing. If USAA reached out to me as an influencer, I would be hard-pressed to find a path of relevance for my audience or enthusiasm for a financial services product. Though if they want to assume my credit card debt, that could change. For a better example, if Bose, the speaker audio company, reached out to one of the top affinity matches for its brand, it would be seeking a partnership with Craig. He's at Headphone on Instagram, but he takes pictures of seascapes and his dog. So just the handle is relevant to Bose, not the content. Affinity is a deeper, smarter way to analyze the data points that help you decide who is more right to work with. The likelihood of success with someone whose affinity measures stack up better than others is probably higher, but just because there is affinity overlap, success is not guaranteed. Affinity is one thing that matters in the execution, but content, transparency, honesty, appeal, incentivization, and many, many more factors contribute to the audience actually responding. Machines and data analysis are magical while at the same time being magically flawed. Sure, affinity analysis can be a super filter to help you get to a point of decision-making. Let's just not let it make the decisions for us. I'd love your feedback. Please shoot me an email and respond at jason at jasonfalls.com. And in case you were curious, today's podcast episode largely came from the May edition of my email newsletter. If you want to get these insights I wax poetic about a month ahead of time, Make sure you're on that list at jason.online slash subscribe. I sent out the June newsletter last night, and I'll share those ideas with you here very soon, but subscribers are a step ahead. They've got that content exclusively before everyone else. Join the growing list of listeners and followers to get those insights early. Head to jason.online slash subscribe and sign up today. While I still got you, don't forget to take a moment to rate and review Influence on your podcast app of choice. The more of those we have, the more people like you discover and join the Influence community. And if you've just joined us for this episode, hit that subscribe button. I do this pretty regularly and even welcome in guests far smarter than me to make your Influence marketing smarter. Want to make a future episode of Influence awesome? Ask your question or throw out a topic you'd like to know more about. Email it to me at jason at jasonfalls.com if you're feeling adventurous. Record a voice memo on your phone and send that file rather than typing. I may use the recording or your comments on a future episode. Of course, I can also just read off the email. So either way, if I use your question or topic, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence the Influence Marketing Podcast is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening. And remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might want to check out. 
What if everything you know about marketing and sales is wrong? <laughs> okay, let's not be overly dramatic. What if 20% of what you assume about marketing and sales is wrong? Marketing and sales are full of myths and misconceptions. So join us on the Rethink Marketing Podcast, where we test conventional marketing and sales concepts to see which ones hold water. And which ones simply don't. Well, let's not undersell it. Find marketing enlightenment on the Rethink Marketing